What is the crack guys? This is Nathan here, the Rambling Kern and Kern School of Combat. So uh, on last week's video a question came up as to what length of stick you should use when doing Irish stick fighting. Now as part of this I also want to cover today um, what type of stick you should use. So when it comes to length there is a kind of general rule of thumb uh, for it which is fairly straightforward. So you make two fists, you put them together like this and you measure from the point of one elbow to the point of the other elbow. So for me that's 32 inches. And then what you do is you add on three inches each side. So for me that would be 38 inches in total. So when it comes to training sticks, obviously for myself I need a relatively big one. So this is one of those size dependent things as well. Obviously if you're a taller, longer person like myself, you'll need a bigger stick. And if you're shorter, you might want a smaller one. And um, this also translates quite well into the other use of the shillelagh, which is as a walking stick. So that will kind of give you a nice kind of golden ratio as such for uh, the proper size for that. So another thing I wanted to cover with that is what stick you should use. So this is a really, really common question. What stick should I use uh, for training? Now I know the number one thing that everyone wants to do is, oh, it's Irish stick fighting, so I've got to go buy a blackthorn stick and do that. Now traditionally, yes, blackthorn was used, but for training, I know a handful of people will use it just to get the feel of it and to know what it's like, but I would not recommend uh, using that for regular training for two main reasons. One, it'll be extremely costly, uh, a well-made stick. It's a long process and um, something that if people are interested, I might cover in a future video, but I would like to get onto uh, a proper craftsman and kind of discuss that. Um, so one, very expensive. Um, and two, probably more importantly, very dangerous. It is a hardwood stick. If it hits, um, you know, anywhere on the head or the hands, very high likelihood of breaking something or, you know, ribs, anything else. It's, it's, you know, the main thing when it comes to training with any weapon is our partner's safety. You know, you don't want to break your training partner, otherwise you're not going to have a training partner. Simple as that. So, obviously then, that kind of rules out most hardwoods. So generally, what I use, what a lot of other, a lot of other clubs use, and this also applies to uh, Eskrima, Arnis, uh, a huge amount of other stick fighting arts is rattan. So uh, I shot this stick yesterday. This was uh, made and given me by my friend Colin Stewart, um, a dog brother over in Scotland. Um, so this one's relatively light. This is kind of a, a crabby carbon size, so roughly about three foot in length. Um, and if you kind of see if I do the old elbow to elbow, you'll see we're kind of in and about the, the kind of range we want. A little bit short, but you know, getting there. So these are great in that super flexible, um, quite light, and also they are not a wood, they are actually a vine. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see down the end of this, but you can see all those little fibers, and you can actually kind of see running up the length of it, that there's fibers. This means when this breaks, as you can start to see up the top here, where I've had to tape it up, these don't break into fragments or pieces. So the classic one, if anyone has played hurl, um, most hurls are made out of ash. If you break ash, generally it will break into a sharp point. And obviously for stick fighting with someone, the last thing you want to do is break a stick into a sharp point and skewer them. And um, again, major thing is that we want to avoid injuries. So what I'm also going to show you is weights of sticks. So this is something that comes up a lot and I thought I'd kind of cover it a little bit in this video. Now as I show these sticks I'm going to show on screen the weights of them. So I'll show the weight for this one now. And as you can see most of these will be in the kind of two to four hundred gram range. They're not especially heavy and um, actually surprisingly light. So next up on the list we have our nice red stick here. So obviously one of the things that comes up with training shillelaghs or you know training uh, Irish sticks is how to create the ferrule or merlon as they're called and um, basically the, the knob at the end. So one of the options I've played with, not a huge fan of this but it's okay, is um, basically a little walking cane stopper like this and this one I've also had a piece of uh, rubber grip tape added on the end. Generally this stick will be used this way for you know, a scream out of other arts. I actually use it this way because it has a little bit of forward weight. And the only problem is these rubber tips can actually be surprisingly tough. 
um, and create quite a bit of impact when you get hit with them. So not the worst, but again, not the best. Um, another option on the lighter end, and, and this is also a homemade option. This is, well, I'd say the stick's probably 10 or more years old at this point. Um, this was one of the solutions um, that was came up with many, many years ago. This is a bundle of um, bamboo sticks with the ends um, rounded off and then taped together with hockey tape. So very lightweight, plenty of flex, um, um, you know, quite lightweight, quite a nice one, um, and kind of a cheap option for um, those who kind of want to do a, a homemade DIY version. But rattan these days is also relatively cheap and relatively easy to get hold of, so generally I would be more inclined to go with those. Um, and then obviously mid-range option <laughs> when it comes to weight but not price is our blackhorn stick. So I'm going to show the weight of that now. And as you can see, um, these are not especially heavy. Um, people expect these to be very heavy because of the big, you know, uh, ferro or, you know, uh, merlon or uh, knob on the end of them, but these are not an especially heavy stick. Most sticks that you'll find in most stick fighting arts are not especially heavy, and that is kind of an important thing because you need a quick, nimble weapon. You don't need a big, massive, heavy, clunky thing. And um, that's the same across the board, and I think that's one of the strange um, associations with most European weapons, is that they're all either really, really heavy and slow moving, or just like big, brutal weapons. Um, they just have to be swung by massive, burly men, but these are definitely not that. Um, and this one isn't actually the heaviest stick that I have here. So now I'll show you the heaviest stick that I have, and surprise, surprise, it's actually a piece of rattan. So this is, again, about three foot piece. Um, as you can see though, this one's a good bit thicker than the last piece, um, so a good deal thicker, a good deal chunkier, and what I've done as a, um, you know, alternative to having a rubber stopper or any sort of uh, ferrule like that is actually just use a lot of hockey tape, basically build a, um, ridge and then tape that on. So as you can kind of see here, this is just standard, uh, green hockey tape. You can pick that up in almost any uh, kind of sports store. A um, few nice things about this. And one thing I want to note while I have it up close here, and the reason I don't use duct tape or anything like that is because any of these folds, um, so if you see kind of these ridges, these sort of folds, um, if you use something like a duct tape, those folds in those can actually be razor sharp. Um, they create quite a little sharp edge and I've actually been nicked a few times by um, sparring sticks that I've used that. Um, now not something that always happens but just something to consider. Um, so generally hockey tape a little bit safer, a little bit better and um, also works to protect your stick in general too. Um, I know some people would also use tennis grip tape as well just as added grip on them. Um, so yeah generally wouldn't use hockey or big part wouldn't use duct tape myself. Do you use hockey tape instead? Um, these work really, really well. Um, gives you just that little bit of forward momentum, that bit of forward weight that you need, um, which allows you to kind of recreate the movements that you need. And the only thing with this is that the stick itself, obviously these ones are a good deal heavier, um, so obviously you have to be aware of that. But the nice thing about rattan is that it's not um, gonna really hurt our partners in the same way that the black one would. I think it's quite forgiving. Um, I'm relatively cheap and easy to get a hold of these days. So definitely something to consider and something to play around with. Um, now if you have any questions as to um, how the sticks are made, how to get a hold of them, or um, you know any questions about um, you know, say making these ends or keeping them safe for sparring, uh, please let me know. And yes, we do spar with these. Um, I will over the coming uh, weeks and months start to show sparring footage. Normally, um, if I was kind of training with a group, we'd have, uh, you know, fencing masks that we could loan out. Um, for example, my little fencing mask here, painted with the uh, four provinces. Now, obviously, thanks to COVID, I can't really loan out masks anymore. So I'm gonna have to wait a little while before we get any sparring footage up, but that will be there. Um, I did have a lot from way before lockdown, but thanks to a 
bit of malware and I don't have access to that computer anymore. So if there's any questions on that, please let me know um, and comment below. I will be in the next few weeks starting on the project that I know I keep mentioning. Um, it's just, it involves a lot of research. I want to make sure I do it justice and do it right. Um, but I will be starting the first video of that next week. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want to try a class, um, Dublin City Centre, um, you know, I offer classes in Irish Dick Fighting, Collar and Elbow, so don't hesitate to get in touch. You'll find my school and social media pages below. If you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Um, Going to be a lot of fun stuff coming over the next year plus. So uh, look forward to uh, going on the journey with you guys. Thank you very much for watching and slow.